We are getting close. Mm -hmm. You can just feel the bucket drawing near to you as we get closer to game time. Yeah, maybe we're excited about some things. We are. Maybe maybe there's some things you're not thinking about that you oh, maybe I should sleep on. You. But really, that it's that segment two that's going to get you today on the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everybody. Locked on Bulldogs, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. And your team is the Georgia Bulldogs. Unless mm -hmm. again, praise God for that. Unless again, mm -hmm. you're a Bama fan here with us, which, by the way, last time we get to say hello to y'all. Yes, it is. It is true. We would love to have seen you on Saturday night. It's going to be a big show. We're going to have a lot of people watching. Uh, wish you could be there. By the but way, you won't be there. You won't be there, by the way. Uh, Locked on Bama, not happy with our confidence, Daniel. It's uh, not. It's not. Gerald great. Towns over in the comment section said that he went over to Locked on Bama. Mm -hmm. They are not pleased with our confidence. No, they couldn't be pleased with it. Um, couldn't be pleased with it. Don't you think, by the way, I, I, this is my last chance to talk to you all because today on the Locked uh -huh. on Bulldogs, we're, we're going to. This is a new segment about. we're workshopping. Clint reads comments from Bama fans on the air. This is what we call podcasting gold. What this this is. Is in the you tell me, Bama you thought fan. people liked the banter. No, they're going to love you this. thought they liked the banter. Wait till they hear Clint read comments from Bama fans. We're going to be talking about what we're excited about, what we're nervous on. And don't, don't sleep on this. Is my last one. Uh, Bama fan says, don't you think Tommy Reese and Nick Saban realize your weaknesses and are going to do the same thing that Missouri did? So he likes the Tommy Reese versus Glenn Schumann matchup. He likes just, the fact that you. their coordinator is Tommy Reese. I just ask you, how did that Missouri game go? Uh huh. Do the See, same thing Missouri did. Go. Okay. Number please. one, Missouri's a better team than y'all. And number two, how'd that end up? Even number if you're three, a little bit better than Missouri. Sure. How'd that end up? Number three, do you realize that not in the history of sports has the mm -hmm. arrogance or the depression of a fan base ever, ever? Yeah meant no. a thing to the outcome on the field by the team. Kirby Smart don't know who we are. No, Players in Georgia don't know who you are. He doesn't know who we are. He, he doesn't who care. He doesn't care he doesn't except care. for the guys that are in the jersey in the locker room with him yeah. and on the sidelines. So Please stop with this We could nonsense. humble ourselves. You could humble yourself. We could all, or we could just do this thing where we talk yeah, about sports because we we're fans. We're just yes. fans. Some of us there are country go. and Western singers, and some of us are fans of a sports team. That's okay. who we are. Let's talk about what we're most excited about Please. on Saturday. Um, we both predicted on the locks yep. episode that this is going to be a one score game. We think it um, we think it is going to be a bit closer than um, maybe some other Georgia fans think it's going to be. But there's a lot there's a lot of reason to be excited. And I'm going to start here, Clint. I might have a I might have a couple, but I'm going to start here. OK, um, this one's in honor of um Gone but not forgotten, a man by the name of Michael Smith, Ooh. old M Dubs, used to be the executive producer. In turn, he has since moved on to smaller and lesser things. I'm just gonna but, say this: it, it did a did a hell of a wake for him. Did a it, it was a it was a nice time. We lit some candles. We said some we said some kind we words. Did. Gurf was there. Um, he was Gurf dressed said the most magical words. Bit, yeah, yeah, and so. In honor of him, I'm going to say the first thing I'm excited about when it comes to Saturday is um, a little combo pack. Okay, a little combos. The, I like the pretzels filled with cheese. That's my favorite of the of the combos. Um, it's a nice. Don't tell me you're a pizza combos guy. That's that's an abomination. It's what that is. Pretzel cheese. What you go with? The combo is Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers. Clint, they yeah, are healthy. They are healthy. Let's go. And they are back. 
And um, Georgia fans, that means good things for this offense. Georgia's got weapons on top of weapons, mm -hmm. but they're going to need all of them to be a full go in this game. And those are two guys that are matchup problems because hear me when I say this, Kool-Aid McKinstry is a great corner. But I never said anything to the contrary. No. But based on where these two guys that I'm talking about line up on the field and the routes mm -hmm. that they run and the way that they play the game, mm -hmm. he's not going to be asked, nor is he capable of there covering them. So it's not that he's not great at what he does. Sure. That's like saying LeBron James is a great basketball player, and so he should juggle chainsaws. It's just not what he does, and so it's not really fair. The fact that Ladd and Brock are back, I think, is, is a key to Georgia being able to exploit weaknesses in this Alabama defense. You know how Brock Bowers likes to take it to the Alabama Crimson Tide. We've seen it before. I've seen it. That's number Daniel. one for me. Daniel, that, is number, that has to be number one. I have this floating around my head because Kool-Aid will be lined up on them at some point sure. because of how formation goes. Brock Bowers, and again, Bama fan, Brock Bowers is not a tight end as you anticipate a tight end being. Okay. He's a receiver mm -hmm. who sometimes puts his hand down next to the line, sometimes spread out wide, sometimes goes in motion, sometimes take a direct snap, sometimes in the backfield. I don't know and I don't care, nor do, neither do you, and Kool-Aid could be on him as he runs up the, the sideline on a wheel in his own cover. He is. He I'm going to be thrilled. And if he does, again, I'm putting my hands up mm -hmm. a la Lane Kiffin for a touchdown. That's coming. Okay. All right. My most excited thing, Daniel, what, what's been, what's been Bama's moniker in the sec since they've been so dominant for all these years. What's the thing that they hang their hat on every single year that they try to exemplify. It's, we're, we're tougher in the trenches than you. Ah, uh, the physicality. Is that, is that accurate thrilled. when it comes to this game? Are they tougher in the trenches? I am thrilled to watch Georgia's offensive line mm. go to work. Guys, uh, Yeah, this Georgia offensive line is going to push around the defensive line for Alabama. I'm not saying you don't have good players. Hear me out. You do. Mm -hmm. Our offensive line is better. Mm -hmm. And and they've proven they could push people around and produce a pocket that is crisp and clean and horseshoe shaped the entire game. It this Dallas Turner or Mary Smith's matchup <laughs> is it like it get your popcorn ready. Like it sure. this is a matchup. Y'all like that is a legit matchup to watch. And um, Alabama is going to be attempting to do something that no team in in college football has been able to do this year. And that is apply pressure to Carson Beck consistently throughout the game. Um, if they can't do that, they're going to suffer the same fate that every team on Georgia's schedule thus far has suffered. Um and so it, it will be a matchup to watch. I like Georgia's chances in that one as well. All right, let's, we're going to pivot. We're going to talk gonna, about what we're nervous about. You just, you just gave him the excited number one. You're not going to give him excited number two. Maybe a save it for don't sleep on. Ooh, don't it's sleep on. A, I like, I'm, see, I'm rolling it into the segment three. Teaser. By the way, little yeah. third segment listeners, come on back for the third segment because we got a giveaway for you. Yes, you stay yes, until the third that's segment. You. Here we go. But first, one about eBay Motors, eBayMotors.com. No, Bama fan, I don't think your lawn equipment can be certified on eBay Motors. They don't put that in the garage. <laughs> that can't be put in. I don't know. Give it a shot. Who knows? It's only for U.S. customers, which I guess you're a part of. I suppose we that's, have to allow oh, that. That's still part of the union. The right part, the right fit, the right price. Every single time, eBay Motors, they have the best, no matter what year, make, model, your car. You put it in the garage. You go to eBay, you start shopping around, perusing mechanical, electrical performance, whatever part you body, need. whatever part you need, the right part, the right fit. And eBay is going to give you a little check mark, going to let you know, yes, this part fits your car that you've told us guaranteed. And if it doesn't, guess what? You get your money back. They take care of it. They have incredible customer service. eBay Motors, the only place Dan and I trust to get our parts for our cars, which 
trust me, are always in need of repair. Okay. Always. Right parts, the right fit. It's like right the price. front right burner on that stove. <laughs> always in need of repair. eBayMotors.com. What? Okay. Though. Mm. Mm. Are this you is, nervous about this? Is the segment that yeah. old Luke and the boys should really tune into from Locked On Bama if they're not happy with us? Hey, hey, Mister Reno, listen um, up! <laughs> I can't listen up. I can't, Mister that guy. Reno. I can't with that guy. Um, bucket, what are we nervous this is bucket about? worthy. We it's have bu- two modes of mm-hmm. operation as it pertains to a Georgia game. Bottles and buckets. Bottles is celebration. Buckets is where you need something to contain that which comes from your body through your mm-hmm. mouth out mm-hmm. into public viewing, which you don't want that to happen. You need a bucket around but it you will. because you're so nervous. It will happen. You're a it Georgia will. fan, so it's coming. You know. Okay. You've it's, seen it. This is, this is it. And if you don't have five bucket minimum for this game, that's on you. Mm-hmm. Get five buckets. Put them in line. Uh, ice bucket, if you need a emergency one, keep that. Next you, go to, <laughs> you get the ice bucket challenge, then immediately vomit into the okay. ice bucket. You know, uh, again, we're Georgia fans of the SEC championship. It's against Alabama. So literally every foreseeable phase of this game is bucket worthy. Yeah. Could Nick Saban out coach Kirby Smart? Yeah. He, he's, he could. he's, he's the greatest coach of all time right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could Alabama's offense run all the way over our defense? Yep. We've talked about that time and time again. We've talked about metrics. Am I nervous that the defense for Alabama takes revenge seriously because they've narrated to themselves that everybody's Mm -hmm. doubted them as a dynasty all year long Mm -hmm. and they're sick and tired of it, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, they could do that and they could show up and they could stop Carson Beck. Am I worried about Carson Beck throwing interceptions? Yes. Here's what I'm honestly legit. So all of that is true, but the thing I'm legitimately nervous about, Daniel, okay. legitimately. And it and it's the easiest thing for me to pick on, but it, I, I have to be truthful to the pod. If we are tasked with taking down Milrow with two freshmen who are playing in their first SEC championship game on the biggest stage, yep, the biggest rivalry, and they are asked to single-handedly contain Milro for the entirety of the game. And we don't get outside pressure and the pocket doesn't collapse in the middle. And we don't have our front four or five take him down by putting a hand on him. And our young, inexperienced, hasn't played great as of late, getting burned and can't tackle and not as physical as the absolute granite chiseled football player that is Milro. We won't be able to stop them hear me out at all at all i am deathly afraid of that can i just go one step further jalen miller is gonna run all over us okay there we go i'm i was nervous about it how many yards i'm now prepared for it i'm now fully expecting it to happen and am hoping that georgia wins anyway Jalen Milrow is going to rush for a buck 50 in this game. Yep. <laughs> yes. And he's going to connect with at least one bomb over. The I top had 150 in defense. my head as when I say 150, that's the floor to me, Daniel. Do you know what I'm nervous about in a, like in conjunction with that? I'm nervous Please. that Georgia is going to get six possessions in this game, like total on offense. Total. I'm nervous that this game is just going to drag out and all of a sudden you're going to look up and the clock is just never going to stop running and Georgia is not going to have a lot of possessions and now all of a sudden the pressure on those possessions for Carson Beck and this Georgia offense is going to be astronomical because Alabama is moving the ball up and down the field on this Georgia defense and Georgia's in a situation where every time they get the ball, you feel like they need points on the board. That's what Georgia could legitimately be up against. That's why I've got this game at like a, an eight-point game, a six-point game 
Yeah, like I got, it, it, I got it at way, six because of in that. the way that I feel that it's going to go. I think <laughs> there will be a few stops that will be made in the game, but I expect the ball to be moving when Alabama has it, and I expect it to be primarily on the legs of Jalen Milrow and over the top. The two things that we said are the ways that Alabama can absolutely beat you. I think those are the ways that Georgia absolutely can get beat. And that's not a great recipe for me to think about the thing that your opponent needs to do is exactly the thing that you invite everyone to do against you, which is pick on your secondary, particularly one mm-hmm. side of the field Don't and so. struggle to tackle physical backs and um, allow big gaping plays in the run game. So, um, yeah, I may have just talked myself into Georgia losing the game, which is a fun thing to do here right before um, we get to it. If but, we can't stop, if, if you're saying we can't stop Miller, we lose this game. I'm just, yeah, I mean, you just it, need the offense to come out and be awesome. If literally like, in the red zone field now, now the script has flipped. Now field goals for us won't cut it in the red zone, which, yeah, you need the way, this offense to just be in virtually Alabama's bullet. Defense really good in the red zone. Yeah, it's it's a tough scene. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, no one's cool. listening to the pod anymore. No. But, well, uh, Mr. Reno has. Luke Mr. Robinson Reno has. turned it up to eleven. He um, is all about Luke, it, and he's saying Luke, all of a sudden we're professional now, Daniel. Luke Before, is Luke is frantically typing, asking if we want to do a crossover. It's a little late in the week, but it's a little it's late now. It's now coming. All right. We got third segment coming. What are you not sleeping on? And um, if you know us, you know, we're going to turn the ship around right oh, after this. Come on. But first, we need to tell you about prize picks. Daniel, why do you enjoy prize picks so much? Well, I spend my whole life watching sports. It, <laughs> okay, um, ask my wife about it. It's not her favorite thing, but it is the reality of the situation. All of that, what I've been told over my life is useless sports knowledge that fills my head is now all of a sudden incredibly useful because I know who these players are. I know how they're going to perform. I have a good sense of who matches up well against who and who is going to have a big night and who's due for a big game. And that's where prize picks comes in. You go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college. You use the code lockdown college. They give you a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. That's free money. And then you take that free money and maybe you combo LeBron James, three pointers made and Travis Kelsey receptions. And uh, both of them, you go with the over and uh, you parlay those together. You win, you cash, you get money. You get paid for knowing if certain athletes are going to perform better or worse than the the metric that prize picks has chosen you're not playing against las vegas casinos you're not playing against professional fantasy football players and that is a real job i recently learned you are playing just simply you against the number you choose more or less prizepicks.com slash locked on college it could not be simpler use the code locked on college for free money a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars at prize picks Here's the All thing right, about Daniel. Bama fan that really that really sucks. If since you asked, I, no, you you saw it in my eyes, and I was it, you, you translated it good. If you don't bend the knee to a Bama fan, this is really good. This is actually th- true. They immediately resort to just like blatant name calling and you're an idiot and you don't get it and you're ridiculous and how could you and oh my gosh I'm outraged at this because Alabama fan is so used to every single fan base in America bending the knee to them and saying oh man I hope we can beat Alabama oh man wouldn't it be amazing if we could beat Alabama it, wouldn't it be incredible if our little football team could somehow find a way to sneak out a victory against mighty Alabama? It, Alabama, I get that that's what you want. That's how you want people to interact with you. But let me just, we're not that anymore. You're that to us. Correct. Like Georgia 
is the team in college football. And until you come out on Saturday and win this game, that is how it will always be. And by the way, when you lose on Saturday, yeah. it doesn't matter that Kirby Smart's going to be 2-4 and four against Nick Saban. Doesn't What's going to matter is that right now, today, mm-hmm. today, Georgia is here and mm-hmm. Alabama is groveling somewhere down around here, just Correct. hoping to sniff at where Georgia currently is. You're We're not that team. Playoff, no matter what. We're not that team. We are 29 games in a row, back-to-back mm. national champions. Mm. We are it in college football. Correct. And so, but you you just literally don't have a category for a fan base that doesn't grovel at your feet and and just blow smoke up your behind. Yeah. We're like, not that. We're not yeah. those fans. And also, oh, this just in. Not only we're, we're we're not those fans because one more time we have the metrics and the team to back it up. That's the big crucial element that you were missing, Bama fan. It's when when you think your team is going to win by eight points, and Las Vegas thinks that your team is going to win by six points. That doesn't make you arrogant. You realize that, Bama fan? Like, that doesn't make you prideful. That makes you right in line. That makes you reasonable. With people whose job it is to make lots of money, almost like professionals, who make lots of money Mm -hmm. off of betting sports. We're in their camp. You're not. It's just that any, any fan base that doesn't come groveling to Alabama... Alabama views them as unserious and unprofessional and arrogant and, you know, lacking humility. Like it's it. We're fans of the best team, the best team of all the teams of all the teams of again, all time. Nobody's done what Kirby has done at Georgia ever in the history of college football. I, I, I've gone on this diatribe so many times on this podcast and I stand by it because you can't say there's anything like what the last 29 games have been for Kirby Smart and Georgia ever in the history of college football. Um, don't Period. sleep on mm-hmm. this being the last time that Kirby Smart and Nick Saban face each other as head there coaches. Go. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm excited about, Clint. And that's what I think people, I mean, again, you don't want to look past winning an SEC championship, making the college football no. playoff, all of those things, This the, living in the now, living in the moment. But don't sleep on this might be it. I'm not saying Nick Saban's going to retire this year either, Alabama. Listen fan. to him. You should wish I was saying that. <laughs> but I'm not saying that. I'm saying something worse than that for you. Correct. Correct. I'm saying this is the last time that Kirby Smart and Nick Saban are going to face off against each other in an SEC championship game. Georgia does play Alabama we next do season. Play next year. If if Alabama, if Nick Saban doesn't retire, they will they will meet in that game. Don't sleep on this is the last time. I should have clarified that. You did. This yeah, is yeah. the last time that Kirby Smart and Nick Saban will ever coach against each other in an SEC championship game. Um that's to me is a confident prediction. Okay. Now, I I want to be true to self right here, Daniel. And being the truest version of myself on this podcast would force me and dictate that I come out and say, don't sleep on this Georgia defense rising up and being the greatest defense in an SEC championship. I don't think you even, even you, I don't think you have the heart to do that to me. Not in front of all these people. I don't think you'd do it again. That would be the most me thing in the world. I can't do it. I'm breaking out into hives just listening to you say. I can't do it. And Colin and honesty, I are are texting about how we're going to start our own podcast right now. <laughs> I can't. I wish I could. Georgia fan. I wish I could. I can't. I mean, I have lots of things. Don't sleep on. Not to sleep on is Georgia doing a six point game against Alabama. I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. If that happens, come back Saturday night. If, if that happens, let me just tell you this. 
Clint's going to be loose on Saturday <laughs> night. Okay. Like you think you've seen Clint loose before. If that happens, I, I'm i just going, you're going to, I'm going to be wearing a flak jacket on Saturday yes. night and I'm just going to be sitting here. Let everybody them. catching strays. I'm going to be called. I will get, I will fly across the pond and wake up a man in the middle of the night yeah. from an igloo somewhere yeah. and demand he. There's okay. lit. There's exactly one person listening to this that understands that reference. I um, uh, I, first of all, don't sleep on somebody winning a home field gift card next week. If you would like to win a $75 yes. home field gift card, you're here listening to the third segment of the show, which means you're eligible to win. All you need to do is send us an email locked on bulldogs at gmail.com. Send us an email, letting us know that you want to win. We will select one of those emails at random uh, and announce it uh, on Monday's episode of the podcast. All you have to do to be eligible is be subscribed to the YouTube channel and subscribe to an audio version of the podcast. Um, and we will select one of those emails. So just send us an email saying you want to enter the contest and we will get you in um, to win the home field gift card. Yeah. Um, don't sleep on Carson Beck getting an invite to New York City after this game. The Tech game wasn't great statistically for Carson Beck. I actually thought he made some of his best throws of the season uh, in the Tech game. But statistically, it was the first time all year he'd been held under 250 yards passing. Previous to that, he was the only quarterback in America that for 11 consecutive weeks had thrown for at least 250 yards passing. Um, and so st statistically, his Heisman campaign, which he's not going to win. Everybody knows that. I'm talking about an invite only. Nobody thinks Carson Beck's going to win the Heisman. No. But statistically, his possibilities of getting an invite took a step back on Saturday night uh, in Atlanta. But this Saturday night in Atlanta, I think there's a chance that Carson Beck could put on a show for a national audience and cement his place as a late invitee to New York City, I am not nervous at all about Carson Beck. No. Carson Beck is him. He's yep. the best quarterback in this Listen. game by a lot. He's the best football player playing quarterback in this game by a lot. Don't sleep on Alabama's defense with that. Don't sleep on Alabama's defense getting torched. And I mean torched. When I say 35 points, we've we've already commented that I think Alabama's best approach to this game is to try to run behind a very, very porous offensive line. Not let yeah, them they can't pass, pass block, so you might as well try to run. And Milrow beating his legs and and getting some chunks and running the clock. So we might get six possessions. And when I say boat raced, I mean 35 points is going to mean large chunks, large bombs, scoring touchdowns. Don't sleep on that. Uh, it, the last five games, Alabama's defense is giving up 5.6 yards per play. It's the same exact the last five games that Georgia's given up. Defenses are the same. But if you look at the yards per play that, that Alabama's hmm. been given up before this, it was lower than Georgia. They they have a better statistical metric defense on the success rate. The last few games, Alabama has been giving up more yards. Well, they've been playing juggernauts like Auburn and Kentucky. Okay. Okay. Just, uh, and if you want to say, well, well, that's common opponent. You're right. Georgia held Kentucky mm -hmm. to 3.2 yards per play. And Kentucky oh. got 4.4 against well, that's interesting. So and, that's less. Uh, that's less. Tennessee so is the identical. The defenses, though, are playing the same. Uh -huh. Say more. <laughs> is there another side to the ball? Yeah. It, does it's the ball the, have the two sides? Yeah. It's the offensive success rate on which Georgia oh, is, percent, is head and shoulders. Oh, they're not success the success rate on yards per play, offensive yards per play. Uh, it is, it is not the same Georgia 7.4 Alabama 6.7. So the defense is the same offense is not the same. 
Don't meaning, sleep on Georgia getting a touchdown all six of the possessions they get at all and absolutely hammering the point spread, the over, and and Alabama having no Mike Bobo running circles around Weekend at Bernie's. I'd love it for him. I would love it for him. I would absolutely love it. And yes, Bama fan, just in case you missed that, I was calling your coach. He's Bernie, the guy propped up in the sunglasses. You understand? Just wanted to make sure you understood that. Mm -hmm. It's because he's really old and may or may not actually be controlling anything within the football program at, at this point. Like He did pop a blood vessel in his eye, though. As an offensive coordinator. Tommy Reese. Alabama fan, it has been a real pleasure. I've loved every moment. It's been truly, and we mean this from the bottom of our hearts. Bottom of my heart. You're the reason we do this podcast. <laughs> Thank you for being you so much you, that you, it makes it so easy much. for us to be us. That's right. Um, we will be back on Saturday night. Win, mm -hmm. lose, or draw, we will be here. And um, it's going to be a wild time. I invite you all to come back on Saturday no. night and enjoy. The I hold reservation to invite anybody. The I invite you all to come back and join us. Uh, we will be here. Uh, send us an email. Register for the home field gift card. And yeah. we will see you guys on Saturday night. See ya.